Hi folks, Ron Oliver here. Uh, today I'm in my garage and I'm going to be priming some panels for my planar works. Um, I use hardboard panels and I prime it with acrylic gesso. Now you can buy pre-primed panels at your art supply store or online, but they're a little bit pricey if you do buy them pre-primed. So um, I'm going to prime them today, take a little bit of video of it, and share my process with you. And uh, hopefully it'll be helpful for you. So let's get started. You can see I'm using uh, Blick Studio White Gesso. This is the most inexpensive uh, bucket of gesso that Blick sells. And it's perfectly good quality for priming your panels. Um, you're going to put three coats on. You're going to get a nice good coverage and a really good surface when it's dried for your uh, top layers of paints, your colored paints, your oil paints to bond to. So you don't need to go buying expensive uh, gesso product if you're just priming your panels. You can see I'm using a very cheap plastic handled uh, bristle brush. You can get these at your specialty discount stores and packages for a pretty low price. This is a two inch brush and it's uh, good. I'm doing 16 by 20 panels and it's good for doing that. Okay, I'm putting on the first coat of gesso and uh, I'm doing this in a horizontal strokes across my panel. The next coat will be done in uh, vertical strokes, in other words 90 degrees perpendicular to this coat. And then the third coat, which you'll see later, is sort of my textural kind of a sloppy coat. But this first coat, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty. We're just trying to cover the surface and create a good layer for the next coat to bond to. We're going to let this dry for about 20 minutes. Then we're going to put another coat on the second coat, let it dry for 20 minutes, put the third coat. Doesn't have to be pretty, folks. Just good coverage. Okay, we're getting ready for the second coat here. First coat was applied in a horizontal direction, like this. So I'm going to do that just for the, for the edges first here. My second horizontal coat on the two edges that run horizontally just so that I'm sure those edges are painted and now I'm going to apply another coat once again it doesn't have to be pretty but we do want I'm going back to the bucket frequently um, we do want to get just the right amount of paint not too thin not too sloppy for this second coat and once again the second coat is going perpendicular to the first coat Okay, keep going back to the bucket to load my brush to make sure I get just the right amount of paint on this surface because I don't want puddles, but I don't want holidays, okay? And then I go back over the surface one last time. This is called tipping it off. I'm just tipping it off and that gets a nice even brush application on this panel. And that's the second coat, perpendicular to the first coat. Okay, time for the third coat. And in the other two coats, I told you to, you know, don't don't worry about being too pretty with it. You know, don't don't try to make it pretty. Just get the paint on there. But now, uh, I want to try to convince you to make it pretty. What we're going to do is we're going to put a thick coat. This is what I call the sloppy coat on here. And I'm leaving the brush strokes. I'm putting this paint on pretty thick because what it does is it leaves sort of a really nice chaotic kind of texture and nature has chaos in it and when you're plain air painting uh, I like to capture that, that chaos and so if I have this surface on my my ground here that that provides that sort of chaotic flow I, I get these little serendipities in the work that are just I think it's just fantastic so put it on like this you know just lay it down thick. I'm, I'm sort of using the side of the brush. I'm slapping this paint on. And the end result of this is sort of a textured surface. And it's going to flatten out a little bit when it dries. So don't be worried that it has too much texture because it does flatten out some when it dries. But this makes a really nice surface for your uh, plein air painting, for the paint to come off the brush. It comes off the brush in unexpected ways, and it just creates a, a sort of a visual interest in the surface of the painting. 
After the uh, gesso has dried and cured sufficiently, at least for 24 hours, better a week, um, what I do then is I coat the panel with uh, rattle can spray paint. Uh, what I use is this paint and primer. It's uh, mineral spirit based. Uh, so uh, what it does effectively is create an oil primed surface on the panel. And after, this is what it looks like after it's done. Here's a panel. And you can see the sloppy coat that I did at the end creates sort of a textured surface. See how the gloss is hitting there? And it's uh, a satin finish. And it's an oil primed panel now. And it's really good for plein air work. I find it is. And I like using this um, burnt sienna color. Sometimes I'll use the off-white. Sometimes I'll use the uh, sunlight color. And other times I'll use even a gray primer if I want to do sort of a, a moody uh, piece maybe on an overcast day. So uh, there's the process. That's how I do my gessoed panels and finish them up for plein air painting. Hope this was helpful for you.